We here at Test Drive like to do things different when we have the opportunity to. So rather than just do a regular spotlight on this 2018 Infiniti QX60, we wanted to take it on a road trip. So we planned a trip out to Mississauga, Ontario, which is about 700 kilometers from here, to film some other vehicles that you've already seen. So during that time, we had a really good opportunity to see what this midsize luxury crossover SUV is capable of. We've actually put about 3,000 kilometers on it during the 10 days that we've had it. So we're gonna be showing you everything about this car, going over everything you need to know, and giving you a really good idea of how this car is to live with. The first generation Infiniti QX60, which launched in 2012 as the JX35, is more or less the same today as it was six years ago when it made its debut. The 2016 model year introduced updated headlights and taillights, along with minute changes to the interior. This 2018 model is equipped with the premium package, which adds front memory option for the driver, which includes the seat, mirror, and steering wheel, an entry exit system for the driver, remote starter, a 13-speaker Bose audio system, a round view monitor with 360-degree cameras, and Nissan's enhanced intelligent key. In fact, this is the same smart key we had on our 2010 Nissan Altima, which isn't a very good way to try to make your vehicle feel premium. Either way, these features add $5,000 to the purchase price. As far as mid-sized luxury crossover SUVs go, the QX60 has seating for seven with full leather throughout and the ability to easily fold the rear seats flat for additional rear storage space. Since we planned our trip back to Mississauga, Ontario with the purpose of filming, we used that extra storage space quite well with the equipment and luggage that we needed in order for a one day trip. Now let's talk about those front seats. I like the driver's entry exit system, which is a feature we usually find on Mercedes models. When the engine is stopped and the driver's door is opened, the steering wheel tilts all the way up and the seat moves all the way back. The QX60 has front heated seats as standard with a rotary knob to determine heat intensity. Over the course of our 3000 km drive with this crossover, we did find the seats to be pretty comfortable, especially during the long stretches between stops. We weren't finding ourselves looking for places to stop due to numb limbs, but certainly wasn't the best we've had the opportunity to sit in. The driver's steering wheel has a heated option and works quite well, especially when using the remote starter. It will automatically turn on the wheel's heat along with the heated seats if the knobs were turned on to help warm the front of the car up on cold days. Now we found the gauge cluster computer to be relatively useless with its lower trim. Without features like blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, or active cruise control, the main safety status screen shows little but an image of the car. The other screens like music or fuel mileage weren't overly exciting to look at either. The navigation is also pretty bad. In fact, it's easily one of the worst navigation systems we've used on a modern car. It actually reminds me of the Maserati we drove earlier this year. There's way too much color going on at any given time, and the screen can get cluttered with points of interest in large urban centers. The navigation wasn't pleasant to look at, and the integrated traffic made things look even worse. The main benefit of that large 8-inch screen was through the 360-degree camera system. Overall, the system worked really well and allowed us to maneuver this behemoth of a vehicle in and out of our garage without hitting anything. Considering the bulk of the QX60, parking it perfectly within the lines became an art, something the around view monitor helped with. Aside from that, the XM radio worked as expected and the Bose audio system sounded comparable to other Bose systems we've tested, such as the one found in the 2018 Mazda CX-9. There are some other important features to note with the QX60 before we go on our test drive. The trunk has a power option to automatically open and close. There are two parking sensors on the front and rear of the car to assist with the 360 degree camera system. The front door handles are illuminated for easier entry at night. The side mirrors are heated and power folding. The second row slides up for easier access to the third row. And most of the interior trim is finished in leather but we do notice that many of the buttons and controls are shared from older Nissan models, which seems to be a trend with these upscale brands at this time. You know, the one thing that still is something that I am reminded when I'm driving this is it does feel a lot bulkier than some of the other midsize SUVs we've driven. You can really feel uh, that, you know, you see the front of the car, you really see kind of almost the end of the hood. 
with this vehicle. Uh, so it does feel a little bit bigger, but it is a very heavy vehicle. It is very planted to the ground and it does have a very comfortable ride. Going back and forth from Mississauga, everything was very comfortable, both the seats and the drive itself. Uh, and despite the fact that it does feel a little bulkier, it was still an enjoyable experience for long periods of time. So we talked about the interior too. Now it really does share a lot with its Nissan brothers. And uh, yeah, you can see that with the steering wheel and a lot of the buttons on it, and especially the key fob and things like that. But really those are smaller little points that uh, you know, might not really bother your average consumer because there are features you can't really get on a non-premium segment vehicle. For example, that 360 degree camera is certainly quite nice. Power lift gate, I know it's on most vehicles, but it's nice to have. You do have heated seats, and if you were to get this vehicle absolutely fully loaded at about 65,000, you can also have ventilated seats and quite a bit going on in the back there. Uh, if you have, you know, maybe teenage kids or preteen kids, and they need to be entertained all the time, then maybe going with that $65,000 fully loaded model is the best for you. It's got rear screens in the headrests with uh, you know, DVD player, so you can put some TV and shows on for your kids. Uh, you've got chargers back there too, so you can have your devices being charged up if they don't wanna use the screens. It comes with wireless headphones too, so you don't have to hear what they're listening to, which is quite nice. Uh, and overall, it, it helps a little bit more with those rear seats. It is a three row vehicle, which is good for families. Again, if uh, maybe you don't have a four person, five person family and you really need that extra row, but maybe sometimes friends or family do come over for a little visit and you need to drive somewhere, it's nice to have the option to be able to put a couple extra people in the vehicle over other midsize SUVs. And the other thing too with the Infiniti is it does have that 3.5 liter V6 engine. So you do have more power than you would on other vehicles. It really does get power to the wheels when you need it. You can overtake people no problem. And I'm sure if you did have it loaded up, then you'd be having no issues whatsoever. We didn't have the car fully, fully loaded on our trip back from Mississauga. Uh, but I mean, the back was full enough with three passengers and uh, we had zero issues whatsoever getting to and from our destination. These are very popular options for buyers here in Quebec as the Infiniti QX60 is really in a small segment. It directly competes with the Acura MDX and, depending on who you ask, the Volvo XC90. Buick's update to the Enclave also puts it in the crosshairs of the Infiniti QX60, giving Nissan some much needed competition in the premium segment. Our test model came in just under $54,000 and had most of the features you'd find on a fully loaded non-premium vehicle. But if you get all the packages, including the rear entertainment system, you're looking at an MSRP of 62695 Features like ventilated front seats, typical safety tech like radar cruise control, blind spot warning, lane departure, and an updated Bose audio system are included in those types of packages. There are plenty of other features for the price difference, but get very similar in comparison with the Buick Enclave Avenir that we featured but cost less. Cost is certainly good, and there are a few other things that the Infiniti QX60 does well. We liked the ride comfort and space available in the interior of this car, and overall the vehicle had good performance getting onto the highway and being able to pass other vehicles. It certainly doesn't improve on any existing technology, but it does do everything pretty well. With that said, there are a few things that we weren't happy with, such as the overall fuel economy being the lowest when compared with the other mid-sized crossover SUVs we've driven at around 13 liters per 100 kilometers on a mostly highway drive. The vehicle also feels bulky with the large body panels that give the vehicle a bloated feel to its design. The navigation was also the weakest point. While relatively consistent with other premium crossover SUV navigation systems, we found it to be too busy and cluttered with information. Overall though, the Infiniti QX60 has a lot of potential and competes well with its rivals in the mid-size premium crossover segment. It's the most affordable of them and gives buyers some choice for packages and options to get the vehicle they ultimately want. Also, we feel that the Infiniti has a stronger brand recognition compared with Acura or Buick, presenting a more premium look for the driver. Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight on the 2018 Infiniti QX60. I want to thank Park Avenue Infiniti in Brossard, Quebec for letting us drive their 2018 to film part of this episode. Without their help, this episode would have been stuck in limbo due to some technical issues with the previous recording we did for our road test segment, and they were very accommodating and excited to work with us on this episode. As always, your support helps make this show possible, so if you liked our video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and sharing it online. 
If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, we invite you to do so as we continue to grow and get access to more vehicles. If you have any questions about this car, please leave a comment below or reach out to me directly on Facebook, Twitter, or by email. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.